I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about happily ever after. We hope. So one of the things that Margaret and I are always trying to help you with is how to change your life for the better. Whether you get your ex back or turn your life around, improve your mental health, uh, improve your relationships, all of those areas we're trying to help you grow and achieve progress because we want you to be happily ever after. We want you to live happily ever after. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so getting there is not easy, but understanding how you can get there is important. Yes. Yes. And I want to talk today about a secure base. Now we've mentioned that term before. From a secure attachment style. Right. Um, this is how you get a secure attachment style. You have to have a secure base. Now this comes from the writings of Dr. Bowlby. B-O-W-L-B-Y. Bowlby, just like it sounds. Mm -hmm. And he was a psychiatrist who wrote a whole lot in the 1950s and the early 1960s. And he was really the person who came up with the idea of attachment styles. Yes, yes he was. Um, he had some colleagues around the same time. One of the best known was a French psychologist named René Spitz. And he did a very famous experiment with monkeys. And he raised a bunch of little monkeys, some with real monkey mothers, mm -hmm. some with stuffed monkey mothers, some with wooden monkey mothers, and some with no mothers at all. Mm -hmm. And I bet you can quickly figure out who did the best, the next best, etc., etc., mm. etc. Yeah. And it began to become clear, this was kind of a, a whole movement, that um, early childhood attachment was incredibly important. Some of the monkeys who had no mothers at all just kind of curled up in a ball and sucked their little thumbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was very sad in a way. Yeah. Um, but this is the context out of which Dr. Bowlby has come. And no one has really questioned what he said very much. No. There are always some academic criticisms, but if you say Bowlby, everybody says, oh yes, okay, Mr. Bowlby, Dr. Bowlby, mm -hmm. um, we believe him. So the way he put it is that you need a secure base. A secure base is provided through a relationship with one or more sensitive and responsive attachment figures who meet the child's needs and to whom the child can turn as a safe haven mm -hmm. when upset or anxious. So, a secure base is typically a parent or your mm -hmm. caregiver, yep. not necessarily a parent if you maybe didn't have parents. Right. Um, but that person has to be available and you learn to trust that that parent will be available when you need them. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. So it's got to be somebody reliable. And consistent. Yes. And that's how you begin to trust other people and the world. Yes. And you don't want them all the time because you want to go off and explore. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the visual image is the baby who comes up and kind of grabs mother's knee um, and looks at mom and interacts with her for a couple of minutes and then goes right back out to explore the house and the toys and everything else. Yep. So it's kind of going back to get refueled and then going out again. Uh, and I'm you, going back. I'm going to check out mom. Yep. Mom says things are good. I'm okay. going to go back out there. That's right. Um, and it's safe to do that. When children develop trust in the availability and reliability of this relationship, their anxiety is reduced and they can therefore explore and enjoy their world, mm -hmm. safe in the knowledge that they can return to their secure base for help if needed. That's right. Okay. They can go back for safety if they're anxious, if something freaks them out, if they just feel, I need to go right. see mom and dad again, and dad and mom are there, yep. they feel safe again. Right. A securely attached child does not only seek comfort from an attachment figure, 
but through feeling safe to explore, develops confidence, competence, and resilience. Mm -hmm. So if you feel safe when you go out to explore the world, you're going to, le you're going to learn. If you're anxious when you go out there, you're going to be terrified. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, most people thought that Bowlby was only talking about children, but he was not. He was talking about everyone. Meaning as an adult, as an adult. you need a secure right. base. So he says, do adults need a secure base? Yes. As we move through the lifespan, we form new attachment relationships with friends and partners. These relationships serve the same function for adults as for children. They provide a secure base which offers comfort and reassurance and at the same time allows us to operate in the world with confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you think about it, we go out to our jobs in the morning or to school or whatever we do mm -hmm. and we deal with the world as best we can and then when we come home we can refuel our emotional supplies just like the baby does at mom's knee. Yeah. And we can say I had a terrible day and someone will listen to us and you know it's basically the same thing. And so you got to keep this in mind. You need to be a secure base for your partner. That's right. Okay? Yes. So it's very important yes. that you learn these skills and strategies. Some people are like, oh, no contact, no contact. No. Well, what about after no contact? That's only a, a drop in the bucket. That's right. That's You've right. got to learn how to be a better partner. And yes. that's what we want to teach that's you. That's what we're teaching you. Now, here are Bowlby's direct words. All of us, from the cradle to the grave, are the happiest when life is organized as a series of excursions, long or short, from a secure base provided by our attachment figures. Okay? So nothing changes. Well, it does. I mean, we have certainly adult capabilities, and we are in turn being a secure base for people. Yeah. But our needs don't change as human beings. So that's why it's so important <clears throat> that when your partner comes home, you make them feel safe. That's right. You make them feel heard. Mm -hmm. You make them feel loved. Mm -hmm. You pay attention to them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's extremely important. Um, and as, this, as I was reading and making notes on this, in the other room, someone in my house was watching... I don't know if any of you out there have seen the show. It's a reality show, and it's about fishermen who fish outside of, um, off the Massachusetts coast, outside of Gloucester, which is just outside of Boston. And because I'm from that area, I like listening to their marvelous accents, <laughs> and I like watching the whole thing. It's kind of amusing. About an hour does it, but um, anyway, that was on. And there's a particular guy who runs a boat there, and if you've ever watched it, they go out and they try to catch tuna fish and it's terrible out there and it's rough, terribly difficult work and it's dangerous and you never know if you're going to get home in one piece. Sounds like Fenway Park. Yes, it does. And, yeah. <laughs> and it ne you never know if you're going to make enough money to support your family. But there's one particular guy um, who has a boat called the, ha the Hyde Merchandise. I'll say it in Boston, the Hyde Merchandise. Anyway, most of the time, almost all of the time, when he's been out fishing and he comes back to port, his wife and his children are there to greet him. And everybody's excited to see him, and the kids run to him, and everybody's all very happy. And I thought, there's my example of a secure base. Yeah. I don't have to leave my desk. Yeah. It's right here. And this is not rocket science, okay? At the end of your day, you need emotional supplies. And so, and then at this point, you know, he ends up being also an emotional supply for his wife and his children, but they're sure doing their job for him yeah. as well. So I was very happy that I met the, I could bring the guy to Gloucester to this endeavor. So if we're lucky enough to grow up with secure surroundings and have a secure attachment, that's great. Um, and you'll be the only one to be able to stay calm in many situations. All right. Rem I don't know if you remember the, the gig we did with um, the people who went to a bachelor party. And we had three scenarios. The person who had a secure attachment was told by his or her fiancé that right after the party he or she would call. Mm 
mm -hmm. okay? And the person with the secure attachment didn't get all that, that upset when they didn't call. The next person had an anxious attachment disorder. And if you remember, when he or she didn't call, that person was alternately anxious, angry, <clears throat> sad, overwhelmed, and called off all the hospitals in town. Okay? Um, and the person with the avoidant attachment disorder said, Oh, did you say you called last night? So you see the difference between the three styles and what an advantage it is to have a secure attachment style. Um, and also just wanted to remind you of all the crazy suggestions we made to you last week, which was if you have an attachment disorder that isn't all that secure, one of the things you can do is affirmations for yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got to remind yourself what a wonderful person you are, what a wonderful cook you are, how much fun you are to be around. And then you're actually going to look in a mirror and say, I love you. Yep. So I just wanted to be sure you remembered all the crazy suggestions that we made. I can't okay? remember which video we said it, but <laughs> if you have been doing it, put a comment below. Oh, Let's see who do. stuck to it. Please do. Um, and even if you can't go that far, at least say one nice thing to yourself per day. Okay? Yeah. Um, because it will, believe it or not, yield results. Absolutely. All right. So we wish everyone a secure base. Absolutely. So think about what we're teaching you and focus on how you can be more secure or a better secure base for your ex if they come back or for your next relationship or whatever. You've got to focus on improving and personal growth so your partner is excited to come home to you yes, every day. Yes, exactly. And they know they can talk to you about their yeah. boss. You're not going to go criticizing them or, oh, well, why would you do this? Or why did you do that? Or I had a worse day than you. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it like this. You should do it my way, which is what we get into True. a lot of that kind of, Lots of time. Mm -hmm, dynamic. Yeah. So one other video that you could watch where I really feel like it coincides with this is How to Be Her Superman. Yes. And not only, you know, it's not just for you. Uh, guys, it's for you ladies too. You can be a guy's super girl. It's just what I titled the video. It works for both, okay? Yeah. And then this guy ends up being a secure figure for the next generation. Absolutely. You know, he'll be a grandfather, I'm sure. Um, but what wonderful role modeling. And not science, mm -hmm. not tricky, not hard to understand. There you go. All right. So, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Feel free to sign up with me as well. Just click on Margaret on the top of my website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me to get professional help on your situation. Go to askcraig.net to sign up for a personal coaching with me.